Welcome back to Summer League. It's oddball. It's Charlotte Wilder. It's Amino Hassan. And I'm really happy about our next guest. He is, a, they call him lifers, right? <laughs> he's, Luckily. He's been, he's been all over the league as a, as a coach, as a front office executive, the GM of the Bucks when they drafted Giannis, the GM of the Orlando Magic. Now transitioning to senior advisor to Orlando Magic. His name is John Hammond. And John, I, I got to ask you, making the move from the, the pressure of the day-to-day of being the GM to senior advisor, which I've always felt like you just give advice and that's it. Do you, is, there, is there a feeling of a weight taken off of your shoulders? Did you notice um, when you said senior advisor with a big smile I had on my face? <laughs> no, I, I'm really, really lucky to have this opportunity. You know, had a, had a long run. I, 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 I love my work. I love my work. Um, you know, the travel is just a tough thing. You know, I tell people, like, in this work, you know, you don't get paid to work. You get paid to travel. And that's really it. It's just, like, being gone a lot. John, do you have so many frequent traveler miles at this point? What are, what's your hotel and airline situation? Well, you know, that's kind of interesting because um, I travel with the team the majority of the time. Right. So with the team, you don't get those airline miles. Right. And I don't know who's getting all those points. <laughs> so, somebody's getting some, those points. Some, the travel <laughs> second, whoever's setting up the travel. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, but, you know, go, I do go out and scout, of course, and mm-hmm. that's a part of the job. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, over the years, I've accumulated a few, that's for sure. What's something about the road life that you're going to miss? Flying out. We, we came out as a group on a charter mm-hmm. here, and even sitting on that charter, you know, I was kind of sitting there thinking, like, I'm going to miss this. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to miss, you know, being with, with the team, being with the group. I'll, I'll still travel some. Right. But, you know, not to the frequency that I've been doing. Right. So, uh, but it hit me that's when it kind of hit me uh that there's going to be a change and the change is going to be being away from the group that 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 will be an adjustment one of my favorite questions when it comes to nba travel when you when you travel with the team is what time is the 12 o'clock bus i said if i ever write a book about my life in the nba it's going to be called what time is the 12 o'clock bus because that's a question that i feel like every team goes through so guys all right bus is at 12 and for whatever reason, that, that doesn't translate over to everybody. So you got to ask them, what time is the 12 o'clock bus? <laughs> uh, do you have any funny stories from your life on the road that jump out at you? It's, uh, you know, a lot of sometimes smaller college towns, mm-hmm. smaller hotels, you know, flying mm-hmm. into to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and... and um, Driving down to Fayetteville, Arkansas to watch Arkansas play. And when I get into Tulsa, they have nothing left but pickup trucks. And I'm like, I'm not driving a pickup truck. But I had to. So, and I drove, I got, I drove like 30 miles in my pickup truck. And I came back and said, I can't do this. And so, I mean, all, all kinds you of crazy turned, things turn happened. around? I did. I got, yeah. And, and, and sure enough, they had a couple cars by that point. But, yeah. <laughs> John, I used to do a lot of college football, and the first thing when Amin asked that, Norman, Oklahoma, when they ran out of water. Yeah. So, you know, running out of cars, running out of bottled water, it's life on the road. Um, in your <laughs> – I mean – What do you mean they ran out they, of like, water? They, like, the hotel didn't have any more bottled water. What? Okay. Yeah. We'll come back to that. You uh, – when you were in Milwaukee, you guys drafted Giannis uh, in the first round, 15th pick overall. He was a skinny kid coming from second division Greece. What was it that you saw in him in his pre-draft and in, in the tape that made you say, this kid's going to be special? We were, you know, really not so much. You know, we didn't bring him in for a workout. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the tape was pretty limited on him. Right. When we went over to see him, though, um, you know, what stood out to us was, a, um, was this um, young kid, extremely long, and the most uh, amazing thing was his hands. Mm-hmm. He had these massive hands. But, you know, also, you know, he played, he played like a point guard. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, uh, uh, watching uh, Wimbayana right now, you know, mm-hmm. I think like, you know, all the things he can do, he might be one of the best passers in the draft, if not the best passer in the draft. Right. And when Giannis came out, he could really, really pass the ball. And now he does so many other things. And he'll make a pass occasionally. You know, you see on ESPN, a top 10 player, whatever pass he makes, and I'm like, that's who he is. That's, mm. he, he can do that. That's in his blood. And you look at his ability to run, and you say, 
with that body and with those hands and his, his like knowing how to play and the feel for the game, he has a real chance. Do you keep in touch? Do you talk to him? To be honest, though? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to be associated with something like that and a player like that. So it's, uh, it's an honor of mine to, uh, to you know, people ask these questions about him and just to, to be a part of him. And, and, you know, the thing about it is, the, the fun part is that he's even like one of the best players in the world. And I think he might even be a better man than a player. Really special guy. I was here when Giannis was here at 2013. And I was telling Charlotte, Back then, the main games were all in the little gym. That's the one that they would put everybody in because they wanted it to look packed. And over time now, Thomas and Mac now is the marquee gym because it is packed. They don't have to make it look packed for TV. It just is. What are your kind of uh, observations or, or favorite things about Summer League through the years? It, it, it's, it's remarkable that it is, has, has turned into this. Because I, I was here the inaugural season with the Pistons. Mm -hmm. And you're right, playing all the games mm -hmm. in, in the Tough. small gym. Yep. And, and, you know, I remember, like, um, you felt so sorry for the referees <laughs> because there was just a small handful of people in the gym watching a lot of the games. And the referees, you know, trying to figure their way through this. And they would make bad calls. And, and the people would just like, you know, you are horrible. I cannot believe it. And, and you could just, you, they could hear it. They had they a direct line Every, to the ref. Oh, exactly, exactly. So I, I remember those days thinking how far, sorry I felt for the referees. And then, you know, to watch this thing evolve into this, it's just the most amazing thing. You know, Warren Legary, mm -hmm. the ultimate mastermind, the ultimate promoter and everything else that he is. It's, uh, um, I, I, you know, I remember when we drafted Jabari Parker, at two, mm -hmm. and Wiggins went one. We did mm -hmm. the same thing, one-two game, and that was whatever year that was. But they played that game in, 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 in Cox, in and Cox. It was standing room only. You wow. could, you, uh, they, they, they had people lined up outside to get, and I think that was the last time that they were going to do that. You know, they said, "Okay, we won't make that mistake again." That was that was exactly the that was the last time they did that. Ever since then, one versus two has always been in the big gym. Uh, I told her that 2019 was the biggest I'd ever seen it with Zion. Where oh, every wow. seat in the upper deck was full, uh, and then last, uh, you know, on the Saturday night, excuse me, Friday night, yeah, we saw Victor Wembanyama come out there versus Brandon Miller, and we saw a packed gym for that. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate about summer league is it's almost like a family reunion. Everybody's here. You catch up with people that you haven't seen or you saw months ago on the road or whatever. What does that make you feel when you see someone that you knew as a child now is part, part of this family and doing this for a living? I mean, you guys think about this. The one thing about longevity is, you know, like um, it's, you start feeling a little bit when I remember I recruited um, Winston Garland uh, to Southwest Missouri State University. Winston played in the mm -hmm. NBA. And his son, Darius, now yep. – you know, well, lottery pick and one yeah. of the, you know, an all-star point guard. And, and I can remember when, when Winnie would bring Darius to Detroit and he was like, I don't know, maybe 10-ish, maybe at that mm -hmm. old. And, and my window overlooked the practice court and I'd be sitting there talking to Winnie and I'd look out the court and I would see Darius down there just handling mm -hmm. it and, and doing the things. You'd think like, wow, you know, he might have a chance. Never dreamt he'd ever be this. But, right. but there's so many guys like that, you know, now you're, you're, you know, guys that maybe you coached and you've been associated with in the league, and now their sons are coming up. So right. it's really, really, really fun to be a part of that and and uh, and and see that see that happen in the people's lives. You see the whole evolution, um, John. You were telling us before about teams that you've coached at summer league. Um, what was the best team that you've brought here? Wow, I I, I don't I don't think there is one. <laughs> You know, and, I and, set you and, up for that. I yeah, set you up for and, that. And, and I, I can remember, like, you know, think about, like, you know, co I, I coached a few times in summer league, and I was just so out of control, just so out of control, getting ejected from summer league games. No, you got ejected. From John. Oh, man, I'm what sorry. What summer league John. game? Which one? It, Tell it, it was in, in Los Angeles, <laughs> and I think at that time, I think at that time. The Long was, Beach? You got it. In Long Beach, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, Scott Foster, who's still a mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, excuse me, no, Scott Wall, Scott Wall, Scott. who is a, a longtime NBA referee, and uh, I remember Scott ejecting me from a summer league game. I'm like, I'm 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 so ashamed of myself, you know. But but you know, it's they, passion. Yeah, it's a passion. It, it is. Game. It is, and, and also called being nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I lose control. I can't mm -hmm. help myself. 
when it comes to basketball and golf. Golf. Oh, golf. No, yeah, yeah. No, those. No, I, I, I become like a, a, like a little bit of a lunatic on the golf course too. Like very impatient and 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 don't handle myself very well. But in basketball, I mean, it's like, I, uh, I, you know, if 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 I said I'll give you like in Milwaukee, my nine years in Milwaukee, working with John Horst and Dave Dean, two young mm-hmm. guys that were like up in the suite with me most every game, and if I did it once in nine years, I probably did it. You know, maybe. Maybe as many as, as 50 times. Mm-hmm. I would walk in after the day of a game and say, guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my behavior. Wow. wow. Really, I mean, I was not as proud of what I was doing, but yeah. I'd really, I really, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help myself. The game was just, just would just get the best of me, you know? I've never been, I've never got an apology once. I've been cussed out so many times. <laughs> I, I, don't, yeah. I don't even know what I did wrong sometimes, but. To apologize. That, that's that how I. Well, that's that's how I know you're a nice guy. Yeah. I, I wasn't. I wasn't. I, I wasn't. Never. I was never cursing at them. It was just my behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Winning is fun. There's the pressure of winning. Right. But man, losing. That's 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 kind of what what this is all about. You know, Get, getting yourself out of those deep holes. I, I believe uh, Pat Riley once said, "There's winning and then there's misery." That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. This this has been anything but miserable. Anything this but miserable. This has been an amazing sit yes. down with you. Thank you, John. Guys. Again, congratulations on your new. Hopefully, more stress-free. You can make me smile again. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> that senior advisor. We're going to need business cards. You're going to have to give us a business card with your new title. I wonder on. if they're going to make new business. I, I, I don't want that on my business card. I, 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 I think I'm just going to stay you, playing. Did you have to fight for senior in there? Did they want to make you an advisor? Now, wait a, wait a damn minute. Hold on. No, I, hey, look, I, I, once again, I'm just so appreciative of, of, of the, 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 the right to do this and so whatever they called me, they could call me anything. I was just, I was just happy to have the, 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 the responsibility and the role. He's John Hammond. Thanks a lot. That's going to do it for us today, and I want to apologize for everything Amin said. The f-